I pledge to Nigeria, my country, to be faithful, loyal, and honest, to serve Nigeria with all my strength, to defend our unity and uphold our honor and glory. So help me God. to the rest of the world, what our grievances and uh, what we demand. These demands we already have sent, like I said, we've sent them to the uh, U.S. Capitol, to the White House, and also to the State Department. And we're going to be following uh, those uh, uh, very aggressively. It's like every four years, we go again, and we get back here to the same thing. Every four years, we get back to the same thing. Um, during, obviously, um, I'll have time to make my speech, and during that time, um, you know, I will now express my heart to, to Nigerians, both here and in Nigeria. Um, I know most of you know, uh, uh, I'm articulated in full ways, and that's the reason why we, we first of all, we initially started this thing, is that not to call a political party, uh, we call names of any party, but rather, the system Nigerian system is broken and will need to be fixed. So having said that, um, I thank you all and back to you, Prof. It's a pleasure to be here to join great Nigerians out here. My name is Kimi Nosemiki. Um, I live in New York. And um, anytime I come back here in DC, it reminds me of what democracy stands for. I believe this is the heart of the democracy of the world. Uh, I believe the US stands as a beacon of hope to all democracies, and uh, when it was time to come back here, because we were here a week before the elections. That was more like a partisan crowd, but it was basically telling INEC to do the right thing. And we were at the Lafayette Square, we had enough fun fair, talking about Mahmoud has promised us, we had the promise from Chatham House, we had the many clues, we had the assure you and reassure you and assure you, and all the assurances we had, and um, we had very high hopes that at least, if for anything, this would be better than all the elections we've had. Um, I am aware, because I am also the convener of Save Nigerian Group USA, with members across the 36 state and the LCT. So the hopes were very high for this election. To cut the long story short, ordinary Nigerians across Nigeria and diaspora became politicians. We started to get into the process. We convinced our brothers and sisters that this election will work that our votes will count. We took the word of Buhari in the UN National Assembly where he promised that he wanted to leave a legacy of free, fair, and credible election. We believed it. We believed uh, Mahmoud Yakubu who said the results will be uploaded to the IREF real time and our votes will count. As a matter of fact, he made a video that went viral in October disclaiming the rumor then that they will not upload the presidential results. He, he assured us and reassured us to assure us again until now we know what that is worth. 
It was horror on the 25th of February. I was holding a Twitter space. My handle is at Twitter of the USA. And I had 15,000 people in the room for that election. And a lot of people across the diaspora and many media were very hopeful that Nigeria would get it right this time. Alas, Nigeria did not get it right. Our people voted in spite of the violence and voter suppression, but our votes did not count. Collusion centers became a horror show. We had videos and documents of governors bullying people, coppers being threatened. So many things have happened to you all, and we won't really it. But we're here to say that we'll not be silent, that our voice must be heard. Right now, Nigerians are gradually realizing that their voices have been shot, so they're coming out. In Abuja, they just did uh, 14 days today, coming out protesting. Our mothers in Asarawa state are so enraged that some of them even now to strip in the indignation of what has happened. It is important that we don't keep silent, that we continue to speak against what we've seen, particularly on the 18th of March. 18th of March, what we saw in Lagos, in Imo, in Rivers, was not an election. Uh, according to one uh, international observer, he did not witness an election, he witnessed a crime scene. Uh, our country was reduced to horror and terror. People were scampering to look if they can hide from being, looking like a certain tribe and all that. So we must speak against what has happened. Our principal, my principal, I would say, because there are other parties here, my principal is here with me. He's in court. But we want the judiciary to know that the world is watching, that we know that the, the integrity of that of body is at, is at play. Uh, we also know that the CGA was allegedly in London for some very questionable reasons, and he ran back to Abuja. So they must know that we are not going to accept any fraudulent um, adjudication of this case. We want the votes to count. For me, I'm leading the obedient movement for peaceful protests across Nigeria, asking people to come out peacefully and express their displeasure. Some of our obedient movement disagree, but I believe that it's a constitutional right for people to peacefully protest when they do not agree with the government policy. I don't think anybody, apart from those that it's con, accept what has happened. It's very important that we continue to speak peacefully and also let the judiciary know that we are all watching because Nigeria, 260 million people at last count cannot be allowed to be mortgaged by very few people who think they have power. For the power of the people must be always greater than the people in power. Right. With that, I want to welcome you all and thank you and I thank our chairman for being here. I'm very delighted to see my number one, my big sister Aisha Yusufina Miss. Let's start. <laughs> Why do we, as a matter of fact, in Nigeria, need this protest? We are tired of looking at our own younger generations dying in the ocean because they are trying to flee Nigeria. We are tired of all the old treasure looters. They don't want to give up power. They keep looting the treasury, and they are responsible for the backwardness of Nigeria even till today. And just like the last speaker said, uh, I'm Dr. Patrick Ojo from Florida. I'm from Edo State, just like uh, the last speaker. Uh, we, we knew why we, we came, because this is not just uh, about OB or about uh, Tinubu or about any other person. For the first time in Nigeria, we had a movement that cut across ethnic barrier, yes. Yes. cut across religious barrier. Yes. So, and the momentum was there until they trampled on the result. Many people kept doubting, they kept saying, oh, this infrastructure is not there. What are you talking about? Uh, when, when uh, people just come out and win like that, no governor, no, uh, no state uh, representative, no, no, no this. What are you talking about? The people, the power belongs to the people and not to any individual. If they had allowed the, the protest, I mean the momentum that started on the 23rd to continue, they would have been surprised about the outcome. So I just want to let everyone know that our people are angry, not only at home, but everywhere. We knew that uh, the cream of our society are all over the whole place today. We are the cream of our society, but we are here developing foreign land, and our land is looking for us. That 
is an outrage. Our people, they look forward to us. They look out to us to come home and help them. And this is one of the ways that I wish we can do that. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm still standing under the existing protocol. Constitutional democracy. Constitutional democracy, to my understanding, is a process where the voiceless, the poorest of the poor, and the weakest of the weak use the only tool they possess to make their voices heard. It is the only system that allows the downtrodden voice to be heard loudly using the principle of one vote, one man, one vote. To be, to be of equal yoke with the most powerful and the richest in the world, by using a singular vote, they can change the direction of the country from good to bad, or from bad to good, provided it is their choice under the constitution of the land. In Nigeria, the situation where the voiceless and the weakest in society are denied their fundamental right to pick their leader has been the norm. Over and over the years, the people cry out. As the most powerful, as the most powerful continent to struggle the system. However, after, 1990, after 20, 2019 election, in which the most powerful, I do, remember I use the word the most powerful because the most powerful are the ones in government. Overwhelmingly subdued the citizens by forcefully denying the people their choice. The masses embark on making sure that the system provides a protection of their rights. This singular action of the mass was the 2022 electoral law, signed into law by this present administration. By this singular act, the hope of the masses was renewed. The umpire institutions called Independent National Electoral Commission, INA, that conduct elections went to work to provide the guidelines according to the provisions of the electoral law. Within the ambit of the Nigerian constitution, these guidelines provided by INA were wonderfully written and was widely accepted by the political parties, welcomed by the Nigerian masses, and even got contributed contributed even to high places from international communities. International communities, communities went as far as contributing money to making sure the guidelines were afforded. For a minute, Nigerian people's faith was restored. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, I am standing before you all with great disappointment in my heart to declare the conduct of February 25th 2023 presidential election in Nigeria, an embarrassment, a slap to all Nigerians and, a, and, and lovers of democracy, a sham, a travesty to the system, a rape of democracy, an outright disregard and, and violation of the law. Independent National Electoral Commission arrogantly, deliberately, intentionally, and brazenly disregard their own electoral guidelines violate the electoral law of 2022 and totally abandon the constitution of Nigeria. The supposedly unbiased empire became very com compromised and biased to Nigerian people. They threw caution to the wind, even when asked not to do so. This is a conference. The INEC chairman, in the process of satisfying the most powerful, violated the constitution by not meeting one of the provisions of the law that requires 25 percent of the federal capital electorate. When he rushed to announce and declare Bola Ahmed Dinibu as winner at 4 a.m. early morning, when the masses were sleeping, once again, denying the Nigerian people, the poorest of the poor, the weakest of the weak, and the downtrodden their fundamental right of free and fair election. The Constitution once again prostituted to deny Nigerians their simple human rights. <coughs> the report from the Nigerian Inter Interior Community Observers around the world strongly suggests a midnight robbery perpetrated by the same people appointed to defend and protect the masses. By not following the Constitution, the electoral law, and the guidelines, 
the Electoral Commission violated the law and need to be held accountable. It will be difficult to ask the beneficiaries of the stolen mandate, which is the present government, to hold the Commission responsible. Thus, we call upon the international community to do that. We call upon the United States of America and all defenders of democracy to hold Niger to hold Nigerian Empire, the Electoral Commission responsible. We ask that the election result be totally rejected and the beneficiaries of the fraud election perpetrated to the, Ni to the people of Nigeria be persecuted by the international community. We call on the United Nations, we call on the United States and United Nations to make these declarations. One, support Nigerian people over compromised government structures. Two, support all actions of free and fair democratic process and the rule of law in Nigeria. Three, reject all forms of election malpractices and violence in Nigeria. Four, reject all results, actions, and events emanating from an election marred by malpractice and violence. Five, impose U.S. visa ban on all those responsible of the federal of February to defeat two to three presidential election in Nigeria. This declaration is in line with President Biden's promise of multilateralism in U.S. foreign policy, and the United States and the United Nations General Assemblies A slash R E S slash seven three slash one two seven request for necessary measure and arrangements for the United Nations to commemorate and promote multilateralism and diplomacy for peace, a doctrine of what affects one nation affects the other. This doctrine has been affected in Ukraine. We ask that the United States do the same in Nigeria by holding the present government responsible. We unequivocally state that INEC personnel were compromised by the ruling party and present, and present sitting government that there were evidence of violence. Peppers were snatched. People were attacked with machetes, <coughs> shot at with guns, <coughs> killed and men. Ballot peppers that were, were snatched while security personnel whose main responsibility is to protect and preserve life watches. In some occasion, have the thoughts to accomplish their, their tasks. These actions are in violation of the above declaration. In pursuit of justice, we call upon the Nigerian judiciary to simply do the right thing, correct the injustice perpetrated by the commission, to have in mind that the world is watching and the fate of ordinary man, woman, and youth is now in their own hands. Yes, the fate of Nigeria and, general, and Nigerians hangs in the balance with them. Justice must, must be blind. Judiciary must deliver justice by upholding the law, by the law, regardless of whose ox is God. The mandate of the people must be judiciously returned to the people, regardless of who the winner is. Order for immediate arrest of all involved in violation, most importantly, the Constitution and the electoral law. I thank you for, for listening, and may God bless the federal government of Nigeria. May God bless. We are citizens. We are not slaves. No matter what they try to make us to be, we know we are citizens and we continue to demand for our rights as citizens. I'm standing before you today as a Nigerian, as an active Nigerian. A Nigerian who believes that we need a nation where the child of nobody can become somebody without knowing anybody. A Nigeria where no Nigerian is more Nigerian than any Nigerian. Over the years, we've kept quiet, we've moved on, we've never participated. And some few people have taken it upon themselves and they think they have the power. They do not have the power. Because like indeed you said, the power belongs to the people. We are citizens. The office of the citizen is the highest office in the land. The office of the president is the highest political office in the land. So therefore, the office of the citizen is the number one office. And we are citizens of our country. We came out, we voted. We did all that was supposed to be done. Nigerian citizens did the needful. But guess what happened? There were for some people who think that Nigeria belongs to them, and they tried to steal the mandate of the people. 
We must not allow those who do not have any respect for our nation continue to steal from us again and again and again. They have given themselves the illusion of power, but today we have seen that indeed they have nothing yes. other than toggery, other than violence, other than bloodshedding. There is nothing that they have. The Nigerian people prove that. They say to us that our votes do not count. And the citizens on the 2023 election, they decided to come together and participate in the process. And did you see what their participation did? It changed its trajectory. And it has done that forever. The illusion of power that they have given to themselves, that they have made themselves to believe that they own Nigeria for over six decades, we have sat down doing nothing. Our parents allowed themselves to be enslaved. We have allowed ourselves to be enslaved. Our children will not be enslaved. Amen. Our children will not be enslaved. That we have a nation that they all can be proud of. That they can walk anywhere in the world and go along with their green passport or whatever passport they decide to add to it and be proud that they are Nigerians. Our children are all over the country. We have rendered our own children stateless mm -hmm. by our own action, by our own silence. They are wandering all over the world. They are looking for countries that they can call their own. When we have an amazing country that God has given us, I really should help to go. Enough of the individual achievements. Enough of the individual goals that we are, we are reaching, the heights we are reaching. It is time for our collective achievement. Yeah. As individuals, we know Nigerians, we are great people, amazing people, creative people, intelligent people. Yes. But as a nation, <coughs> we're still down. So we must take ourselves up. And this is a call to the International Committee and the Committee of Nations. That the things they do not accept in their countries, they must never accept it in our own country. Yes. We have seen some countries who have come out to congratulate so as someone who got the INEX mandate. By the way, the people's mandate must be given to the person the people chose. Yes. What someone has right now is the INEX mandate. Yes. And there were some countries that were willing to come out and congratulate such a flawed process. We, we, are not, we do not care who it is that is voted for as long and it is the choice of the people, and it is done under free, fair, credible election. Then whatever choices that people make will accept those choices because they have a right to choose whoever they want to choose. Yes. But in a situation where the election is not credible, where it's flawed, where people are, are killed, a lady went to, to vote, and she was attacked. And she went to the hospital. She patched herself up, and she came back. And she voted. That is the Nigerian spirit. Yes. Her blood was dripping on her ballot paper. And that's the election that a representative of, of a certain country said that we should accept that it's fascinating. No, it's not. We're being killed because we just come out to, to just do what we need to do, our civic duty. That must not be the Nigerian story. We have a nation that we all can build. A nation, like I said earlier, where the child of nobody can become somebody without knowing yes. anybody. Yes. And let's not look at people who have gone through the ranks, who have gotten into position, have taken it upon themselves, and are, are now holding Nigeria ransom as they are the representative of children of nobody. No, they are not. They are not the somebodies who are denying the nobodies the opportunity to grow. We have a nation, an amazing nation, and we all must stand and fight for it. Giving up is not an option. Giving up is not an option. The good must be more tenacious than the evil. We have given up again and again and again and we have moved on. And that's the reason why they continue to do what they do. At this moment, no retreat, no surrender. We are fighting for our nation. The 2023 election was election for survival. And Nigerians came out and they put in their all. And I will round up by saying to Nigerians in diaspora, you contribute so much to the economy of Nigeria. You have over 4% of the GDP you contribute to the nation. But you have zero political power. And that must change. If your, contrib if your money is good enough for Nigeria, your political power should also be good enough for Nigeria. They will not say that. We will not say that. I'm a Nigerian.
you are living in Nigeria, yeah. and we see that back home, we call you and tell you to send money to us. Yes. Then call, you must have that political power also. Right. Yes. And everything that must be done to ensure that no Nigeria, anywhere, any, any place in the world is disenfranchised, right. we must do that. Right. And by the way, the judiciary, that some people think they own. We must let them know that we as the people of Nigeria, indeed, we own everything. Yes. And that judiciary, we are going to put the spotlight on all of them. Yes. Every judge. Yes. We will put the spotlight on you. Nigerians have never taken their activism to the judiciary. Yes. We face the executive, we face the legislative arm. This is the time for us to face the judiciary. And they must do the needful. They must ensure that the judiciary becomes the last resort of the common man right. and not that of corrupt politicians. Thank you. And we are here as peace-loving citizens of United States of America with dual citizenship of Nigeria, our land of nativity. We are here for a peaceful protest because democracy, which is the foundation of peaceful coexistence in any country, especially in Nigeria, a nation with 200 million people, over 300 nuclear diverse groups, scores of different languages, religion, and belief system. We fear that her, if her democracy is destroyed, Nigeria will burn, and we don't want Nigeria to burn. Hence, the need to preserve Nigeria democracy by any means necessary. On February 25, 2023, the people of Nigeria from the north, from the south, from the east and west, notwithstanding that the voter repression was going on, assassination and intimidations from APC, the ruling party, stood in line in the rain for 10, 12 hours to do their civic duty and vote. I marveled when I saw a mother who was beaten by thugs, drenched in blood and shivering, return to cast her votes. They endured this hardship because they understood that madness is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome. They stood to vote because decades of hopelessness will give way to a new Nigeria. Insecurity to security. Decisions to prosperity and perpetual gloom and darkness to light. They trusted President Buhari and INEC Chairman Mahmoud Mahmoud Ukabu, or whatever is his name, I don't even care to know, who promised that this time the people mandate shall stand because Beaver's machine will ensure accurate counts and the tally will be transmitted to the collection center without human interference. And view, and we all can view this life as promised. It was a false promise, unrealized hope. After my people have voted, the senatorial and the House of Assembly votes were uploaded and transmitted. When the powers that be saw that the people had chosen a credible man, proven and trustworthy as their president, they pulled the plug, rigged and manipulated in a daylight lovely fashion to disenfranchise Nigerians yet again. At 4 a.m. when weary Nigerians were asleep, imposed their chosen president, choosing man as president. The chosen man, Master Bola Ahmed Tinubu, whose last bucket list is to be president of Nigeria at any cost, because it is my turn, he stated. He is an unrepentant drug baron who acts with impunity. He has still fear and intimidation as a necessary tool for corruption and a medium to achieve power. He stated that power is sub a la carte, but at all costs you must fight for it, snatch it, and run with it. <laughs> which was exactly what he did with the help of INEC President Mahmoud Yakub and Tinubu Goons, who terrorized, maimed, tortured, and manipulated the result to declare him falsely their president. Tinubu must not be sworn in on May 29, 2023. God forbid. He is a fraud. 
a product of illegality and disenfranchisement. Imposing him on us means the end of democracy in Nigeria, period. The end of democracy in Nigeria is what will happen if you impose a man that the people has not voted for. He is not the mandate of the people. We appeal to America, United States Congress, and President Joe Biden. We want to say thank you to the time honored Biden for not stand sending a congratulatory message to this falsely imposed president. But it is not enough. Evil prosper because good people choose to keep silent and look the other way. America, in your entire history as champion of democracy, you stood in the gap many times between the oppressors and the oppressed. You did it for South Africa. You did it in Kuwait. You did it in Iraq for Great Britain when Hitler came upon them. Among many others, and even now, for Ukraine against Russia, who thought to swallow that smaller nation? But you said, not on my watch. Your predecessor of President Clinton, apology to the Rwandas, was for acting late. Let history not judge you, Biden, as one who failed to act early for Nigeria and Nigerian youth. Speak out against this atrocity before it is too late. Ask your State Department for, grant, for, for, for their own information. Ask different people who have participated to see what is actually the truth. For the youth of Nigeria shall no longer allow the heels of the oppressors upon their neck. If all hope was lost, I fear they will revolt. And their enemy had guns and might on their side, but the oppressed of my people has no power of their own against this great evil. Call your embassy in Nigeria, call the International Electoral Observers, hear the truth and what transpired from them, and rise to defend our fragile democracy. For we will not let our levels be in vain. We will not. Nigeria will back a new nation where freedom reigns, whose government shall be of the people, by the people, and for the people. Lastly, lastly, let me state here, you evil politicians, corrupt judges, police and army, and goons who have weaponized poverty and made intimidation your core instrument, I counsel you to renounce your evil ways by doing justice. If not, know that we Nigerian diasporans have joined the fight. We will not relent. We will not break rank. We will not yield right. or surrender. We will engage you by every lawful means. Mm -hmm. We will take our protest, petitions, and appeals to the House of Congress, right. to the Presidency, right. to the United Nations, yeah. to international criminal yeah. courts, yeah. to the nations of the Western world, right. and to God Almighty, who wow. has no respect yes. of person, whose dominion is internal, yeah. and none can stay his judgment. Know right. this day. You and yours will no longer enjoy your ill-gotten wealth in peace. While our poor masses are miserable and our beloved nation is ravaged by you. Your hour of reckoning is come. This evil shall not endure. A new Nigeria is coming for the days of our captivity is over. And we shall back a new nation. We have freedom, justice, and liberty shall be. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak. I spoke earlier at the front of the White House. Um, I just arrived from Nigeria this morning, so I do not take this for granted. And by the way, I came on my own budget, not sponsored by any political party. I am a law-abiding citizen of Nigeria, a lover of democracy. I am here for what this says. This is about our democracy because I like to believe that sometimes we might think that we're advocating for maybe a particular party or a particular individual but sometimes we need to look at the bigger picture for me I like to tell people that my loyalty is first to Nigeria the people who do not have the privilege that I have had 
the people who have not, who do not even know that they even have a right. Um, me being here is not exact. It's, it's, I would, I don't want to say a risk, but right now there's so much intimidation going on in Nigeria, where in some parts of Nigeria you can't even make certain comments just by virtue of where you're from. That should not be happening in 2023. It should not be happening in a country that is a democratic system. What happened in February 25th is a shame to not just Nigeria, but the continent of Africa. We are supposed to be the giant of Africa. People, Africa looks up to us. We see Nigerians succeeding around the world. And I just ask myself, we're so resourceful, we're so intelligent, we have everything going for us. Why are we not getting it right? It honestly breaks my heart. I can't begin to tell you how much money I spent to make sure that I had my PVC. I was intentional about it. This was my first time voting in Nigeria. And what happened? I, I don't know how many, and this is not just me, a lot of Nigerians in diaspora went back home. A lot of people, it was a big sacrifice. A sacrifice that we were actually looking for results. We were looking forward to a new Nigeria. We all know what is possible, but a group of people just sat back and decided to hijack our democracy. Our democracy is under attack. We might not see it, but it's, it's, it's worse than we, we know. And the hope right now is in people like you and I, who thankfully have an alternative. It took me a long time to actually accept the Canadian citizenship because I, I love my country so much, Nigeria. I didn't think that I needed it. I'm like, oh, I'm good as a permanent resident. But after the 2019 election, I had reasons to, to reevaluate my decision, which led me to then put in my application to get a Canadian citizenship. And thankfully, that's part of the reasons I can go back home, back and forth, without being intimidated. It doesn't have to be like that. We don't have to live in fear. We don't have to run away from Nigeria. Nigeria is a beautiful place. I'm happy to be back there. I love it there. But with things like this happening, where people would travel across the world to cast their vote, and just a group of people decide, no, you don't matter. You know. So today, I'm here to speak against injustice. I'm here to speak against the impunity and the, the oppression that Nigerians are suffering. The death. You don't have to die just because you want to do right. You want to vote. You don't have to go out of your house to vote and then you don't make it back home. So again, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak. And we're not giving up. At least I'm not giving up. Somebody was not qualified to contest in the first place. Mm -hmm. But we allowed him to contest. Because we felt the people should decide who would rule them. And the people decided that he was not fit to rule. He threw their decision aside. Now, what do Nigerians want to do about that? I want to let you guys know there are consequences for every action. Make no mistake about it. In 1964, what is transpiring now is what happened in 1964. But it looked like a joke until it snowballed into something serious. You see, I look at your faces here, God forbid, but it could be predictable that some of us will not be alive to see 2027, God forbid. You might think it's a joke. When things like this begin to happen, nobody knows who will be the loser or who will be the eventual beneficiary. When Abiola's case started, Abacha did not know eventually he would die. Abiola himself did not know eventually he would die. And when things happen, 
You might be sitting pretty and think, oh, Tinubu is my man. You might be the loser. When they were going for 2007 election, Obasan just said it was going to be a do or die affair. And Wolin Sharika said, look, you be careful. Because in things like this, you don't know who will do. And you don't know who will die. At the end of it, he did. But Yaradua died. So we have to be careful. The point is, what are the consequences? What does the future hold for us? In 1979, Fedeco conducted election. People voted. But they disrupted the wishes of the people by stuffing the ballot boxes. In 2003, NEC conducted election. People voted. They disrupted the wishes of the people by adding figures. So we had places where there were a million registered people, and somebody had 999,000 votes. They added figure. But in this election, we are now getting stories like, if you know you are not going to vote APC, don't come here. This is a new introduction into a Nigerian electoral process. If it is like this today, what is it going to be in 2027? Have you ever thought about it? The future is bleak for us. If you want to sit pretty in your office, you are comfortably in America, it will get to you. You will go home someday. Now, if we allow June and May 29 to happen, do you know what will happen? The separatist group will intensify their struggle. There's going to be fierce struggle. The Fulani herdsmen will run large. Boko Haram will seize states. Things are going to go wrong. If you don't stop it now, when will you stop it? That is a question for all of you. If we don't stop it now, when will we stop it? We need resources. If you can't go, volunteer your money. We need your time. We need your money. We need your connections. Thank you so much. I lived in Lagos. Actually, I'm a medical doctor. And my husband worked in Exxon Mobil. To be precise, because I mean, the injustice that is happening in Nigeria is too much. Professionals are running away. In fact, since I came here, my classmates all are calling me, begging to tell, to tell them how I got here. The situation is bad. I worked in the primary health care center. I was very close to the people very, very close to the Nigerian people. And this is Lagos. So you can imagine what is happening in the villages, Ogwe states, the northern part of the country, the eastern part of the country. Meanwhile, Lagos is the biggest. Oh my goodness. They say it is the heart of Nigeria. Mega city. Mega city. Can you imagine being a doctor and you are in the consulting room and they call you for an emergency? Emergency that will take only 500 naira to save a life of a child that is vomiting and stooling. And you get there, there are no gloves, there are no cutting wood, there is no IV fluid, nothing. There's nothing to do ordinary, simple CBC. Most times, I dip my hand into my pocket, and guess what? They call me the stupid doctor. No, I am not. Because I know what to do, but there's nothing on ground for me to do it. That is the same for the teachers. That is the same.
same for the lawyers. That is the same for people working in oil and gas. Listen, I had it all in Nigeria. When I say I had it all, I had it all. But the center cannot hold. I couldn't continue. Watch my fellow Nigerians die because of incompetent government. The president of Nigeria, the number one president of Nigeria, had authorities media. When I say authorities media, everybody is thinking it's a very big thing. Infection of the ear that a nurse can kill. He went abroad. Yeah. Wasting the resources. Kept our fleet of presidential fl uh, flights, yeah. mm -hmm. jets and everything, and we are paying to a rich. Yes. And now they are bringing in another Currently, he is nowhere to be found. Where is he? Where is this man that stole our mandate? Where is he? We are going to be faced with another eight years of back and forth going from England to Nigeria every day, and the cabals would take over Nigerian system? Is that what we are supposed to be? My husband used to tell me that the oil and gas, if Nigerians know how much money that is being made, and our Nigerian leaders would stay there, take our raw material out, Yes. Another country refines yes, right. and they bring it back and we buy it in a very exorbitant price. I mean, this is too much. This is crazy. I am not having it bed of roses in America. But, I mean, I am here for my children. If I continue in that country, what happens to my children? What happens to my people? But guess what? We all here have one or two or three relatives back home. Yes. So we need to fight this fight because, I mean, we can't continue this way. Yeah. Thank you very much. <coughs> yeah. I think my two minutes are uh, It is very, very gladly to see how passionate, how committed, and um, that uh, some few people, you know, have been as seriously working to uh, help us, you know, regain the student mandate. I think uh, Aisha represents uh, that um, is an example, and she's a model for that. I thank you so much for all you do. Thank you. you are a great inspiration. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, in this election, I described it as a, I'm playing, a, we are in a football game, Emmanuel and uh, a prof, we are playing a football, football game. And the prof gave me three goals, and uh, the umpire credited Emmanuel those three goals. And when prof started querying the umpire, why are you creating me the three goals? The umpire said, oh, well, just wait, 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 let the game finish, wait, let's finish, we'll resolve it. And then he gave me five, and I was managed to get, give one, and he complained again. The umpire said, wait, 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 well, before the game finishes, that you will see what I'm going to do. And at the end of the game, the umpire just turned away and said, you can go to court. <laughs> that is very shocking. It has never happened ever in the history of democracy. You see, the, the revolution that came was unexpected by the, 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 the political class. It was unexpected. So there is no way they could have responded to it than a, a daylight robbery. You know, it was it's stunning. It is shocking. It is disheartening that, that such a thing can happen in a nation that claims to run a democracy. Be it as it may, they fail, they do things with impunity, and they, and they, and they, fail, and they, and they ask you to go to court, mm -hmm. knowing that they also own the court. But do you know one thing? The, the, the power of the people is greater than the caliphate's power, that they, they, the, the authority of that nation, and is greater than all the power of the judiciary. Do you know another thing? The Constitution protects the 
constitution requires an accountability from the leaders. And that constitution is to protect the people. That any constitution that can then protect the people, that constitution stands null and void. And our brother wrote a book, and his name is a Professor Wolo Shenka, that the man died who kept silence in the, in the face of tyranny. This is an election has happened that inspired the generation of youths and giving them hope for a new Nigeria. And I want to apport that, that hope just on, on a twinkling of an eye. It will not happen. It will not happen. And uh, our shocking, our shock is that the international community are standing quiet. Not their needs what, and the issue that we not need to ask is this. What is American foreign policy in Nigeria? Does that foreign policy, is it meant to embolden the impunity of Nigeria political class or is it for the interest of common Nigerians to choose a leader of their choice? What is that foreign policy? Is that foreign policy uh, uh, emboldening the leader, a uh, uh, caliphate government uh, in whose in who's, in who's tenure more than 500,000 people has been slaughtered? And emboldening and accelerating the security that people cannot sleep in their host houses, they cannot travel by road, they cannot go to their farms, they are they are enveloped by every manner of insecurity. Is that what that policy stands for? Or is that policy to enforce all the international treaties on which Nigeria have committed themselves to? And that it is time to hold Nigerian government accountable. It is time for the US government to hold Nigerian government accountable. It is time to require over $2 billion sent to Nigeria as aid and including to strengthen democracy. What have they done with change? Right. It is time to require that. It is time to demand an accountability. It is time to require that, that election be reviewed. It is time to demand from the Nigerian judicial system for once justice. Let them give us justice and be it as it may. It is better they do. But do you know one thing? The battle has begun. The battle has begun. It's not going to quench. This protest is not going to stop. This uh, agitation is not going to stop until we regain our, our full mandate. And so shall it be. In Jesus name. And a lot has been said. I want to say thank you to the leaders, to the organizers, for bringing us all together. We, we should have self-love to move forward. They should, we should all be focused on truly getting the mandate back to, to the appropriate person. Nigeria is it's just barely existing. A lot of our youths have been killed, and like the previous speaker said, a lot of them are dying in the Mediterranean seas. A lot of people are in Nigeria, they can't really eat, they can't get their money from the bank, they can't get anything, and we all are part of it. I can go home, because each time I said I want to come home, my family will say don't come because they're going to kidnap me. And you know, that's painful. And we all, that's really why I'm here, that we all need to make our, our, our hearts, you know, come together, that we, we have a problem, and we want the government, we want the UN, we want the American government to know that this is no longer a joke. We, we have to just do something. And thank you all, everybody. Uh, silence in the face of injustice is, is complicity to the oppressor. And uh, Nelson Mandela talked about remembering our friends who are quiet when we are going through struggles. Therefore, as someone who have really worked to mobilize Nigerians in, I'm sorry, not Nigerian, Africans in the diaspora to support democracy and participate in democracy in this country, used to be the African diaspora to the National Democratic Party, worked on two presidential elections, it's not just to talk about myself, but to talk to our president, our current president, Joe Biden, and the U.S. Senate, the U.S. Congress, and a good friend of Nigeria, Ambassador um, Linda Thomas Greenfield, who is now the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations. We are calling on these names to react. We will remember your silence. We will remember how you intervene for Nigeria. You know, 
I'm 58 years old. This is my first time to see the kind of protest that women unashamedly come out to protest, to show concern. I'm also talking to Africans, Nigerians who are here in diaspora. We cannot sit in a country where we enjoy democracy, enjoy the opportunities in uh, uh, equity and good governance, and then we are promoting this kind of criminality in Nigeria. Enough is enough. The Bible says in John chapter 3 verse 19 that light has appeared to the world, but evil doers hate light but prefer darkness. Because of what? Their deeds are evil. And we are praying and asking everyone that is listening to us or hearing this press conference to please know that Nigeria means a lot. If Nigeria rise, Africa will rise. If it's good to Nigeria, it will be good to the world. I am so nothing hurts me, nothing embarrasses me than when I turn the television on and I see people like Dr. Phil talking about Nigerian fraud, talking about Nigerian criminality, Nigerian corruption. Now my question is, how on earth will someone support a baron? Because the leadership of fraud will definitely multiply fraudsters home and abroad. Home and abroad. So why would you keep quiet? We are not doing this for ourselves. I'm not an obedient movement. I'm not APC. I'm not anyone. As a matter of fact, I mobilized the Nigerians for Buhari 2015 and the last election. And what we are saying here, because we want a good Nigeria that works for everyone, all the four corners of Nigeria, east, west, north, south, no religion. Nigeria that works for everybody. Yes. Enough of, uh, of, of uh, this cabal. Enough of the status quo. Enough of people, some of us cannot travel home. I have seen Nigerians who went on to run for election, but they never come back alive. Enough is that. The U.S. Census itself said Nigerians are the most educated community in the United States. What is wrong with us? Nigeria is likely like a father who struggled hard to raise his son or daughter into medical school and finally built a clinic. But when he's sick, he runs overseas. What a shame. Your daughter is a medical doctor. As a matter of fact, a Nigerian is a medical doctor to Hillary Clinton. Why do our leaders go to Europe? What is wrong with them? When have you seen American elect, British elect, before sworn in the run to Africa or any part of the world? When? Are we not ashamed? Are we not ashamed? Educated people, and you freely come to America, you have handshakes, and you go over there and you do nothing. Kids are suffering. No good school, no good road, no good hospital, nothing works in Nigeria. It's security that we voted Buhari in, in the position. It, where, where, is the, where is it? I help to facilitate Aisha Buhari voice at George Mason University because we love Nigeria. We want Nigeria that work for anybody, not for Igbo, not for Hausa, not for Yoruba. How about the other part of Nigeria that are not Igbo and Hausa? That's right. Are they not Nigerians? That's right. Shame on us. That's right. And we call ourselves giant of Africa. Look at Ghana. Ghana is doing better than Nigeria. Niger will even be doing better than Nigeria. Are we not ashamed? Are we not ashamed? We have all our skyscrapers in America, in Switzerland, and so on. Yet, there is no working school, no primary school that is working. A woman in labor cannot deliver in a good hospital. No good road. Because your wife goes overseas, your wife can overnight or on a weekend go to London and shop. Your mothers are all over there, but you allow people to suffer. God will never let you go free. Amen. Thank you. Amen. This is the document that we um, delivered to this, uh, the, the, the State Department. And uh, because it's voluminous, I will only conclude uh, that uh, we have identified 102 individuals in Nigeria that we are going to continuously bombard the United States government to block them mm. and, and to block government. their wives. Yeah. I am not going to uh, read all them out, but we are also going to make them available to the press, uh, nationally and uh, internationally. Uh, but uh, I want to touch on our demand, which says Nigerian democracy under, under siege, our demand. The first one is let the people's vote count, I make most of the vax to counting all votes, cast the tabulated and announced at the polling booths on February 25th, 2023, presidential election, and strictly follow 
the guidelines and the 2022 electoral law as amended. Two, the INEC chairman must step aside. Right. That's our demand. Three, to return the people's mandate. Right. It is obvious that the INEC declared winner of the 25th, uh, 2023 presidential election, Bola Ame Tinubu did not win the election. Mm -hmm. Mr. Tinubu did not meet, not even the 25% 20, uh, of votes cast in Abuja, and therefore should not have been declared winner mm -hmm. in the first place. Yes. Four, no presidential inauguration. We are demanding that there should be no presidential inauguration on the 29th of May, 2023. Mr. Tinubu has an outrageous political baggage. And his inauguration, why these issues persist in court and around the world, will be a major affront to Nigeria yes. and to the Nigerian constitution. Yeah. Visa ban all Nigerian individuals and their immediate family who participated in the rep of democracy during these elections must be placed on an indefinite U.S. ban. A list of these individuals are attached here. The Joint National Democratic Institute, International Republican Institute, International Observer Mission to Nigerian Presidential and Legislative Elections recommendation must be accepted by INEC and implemented in full. The Global Magnitsky Act and the Foreign Narcotics Kingspin Designation Act. These two United States State Acts must be preferred on Bola Ahmed to right. the leadership of all progressive Congress, APC, the presidency, governors, and other Nigerians and INEC officials who participated in the sham with, with attendant human rights violations, killings, violence, and ethnic profiling. The Nigerian judiciary, judges who participate in any way, who are going to participate in the various election tribunals, and who corruptly issue any questionable judgment must be so treated like corrupt politicians. That's our demand. We also demand that the United States government must withhold any form of official recognition uh, to Bola Ahmed Tinubu because he did not win the elections. We also demand that the United States of America should stand with the people of Nigeria and the millions of Nigerian Americans in the quest for a democracy and the rule of law. And finally, we ask that the international community not to watch, we ask the international community not to watch Nigeria become a failed state or a criminal state because the world will feel it. So thank you so much for participating. This is our demand, I will continue to as hard as possible. Thank you so much. Can we get a all that uh, uh, dovetails into the demands that uh, we have articulated and uh, presented uh, to the U.S. Congress, uh, to the White House, and also the State Department. And uh, we are going to be pursuing uh, all this. And uh, we are also hoping that every one of you, uh, in your respective times, uh, continue to reach out to your um, lawmakers. Uh, we are going to keep uh, making sure that uh, we are in their ears every moment until you know, we let those people in Nigeria who want to steal our mandate know that you know, this must not uh, stand. And uh, of course, uh, I, you know, it's a big surprise uh, for us uh, to have uh, our sister Aisha uh, to be here today and uh, of course, uh, always uh, you know, doing the uh, very fiery uh, speech, and uh, the fact that uh, she spent so much time with us here today. I mean, I know how many times I've tried to call her from Nigeria, it's, it's difficult to get her. Uh, <laughs> but uh, here we are today, uh, being graced uh, by, uh, by her presence. Um, like we mentioned, we have started a list of 102 people that we submitted to all these various places that we mentioned. Uh, that must be considered for sanctions and their families. And uh, the two acts that uh, we uh, have requested the government to act through, the Ministry uh, Act and uh, the uh, uh, Foreign Narcotics Kingpin uh, uh, Act, uh, the 
Folk, uh, drug, folk, folk narcotics kingpin acts is specifically targeted towards uh, Bola Tunubu uh, for his uh, obvious uh, you know, drug-related uh, uh, crimes in, uh, here in the United States. And uh, that is a new dimension uh, that uh, we intend uh, to escalate. And uh, I will also want every one of us uh, to uh, you know, review that act. It's not a very uh, 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 complex, complicated one. Um, so that uh, we will make that case again and again uh, to make sure that uh, um, he can uh, run with uh, the uh, fake return uh, certificate. I mean, like everything else he had, which is fake. So this is not fake certificate that uh, he just was given. Um, yeah, the, exactly. In fact, somebody made a video where he was. Uh, uh, somebody, who, I think it was Buhari, was handing them that certificate and they had it fake, you know, written on it. Um, so, so we may have to well, work that too and make okay. that go back. Yes, okay. As far as we are concerned, yes, that's okay. that is not a certificate as a return to the obligation. But it doesn't belong to us. And uh, when it, uh, the right things are done, uh, the right uh, certificate of return uh, will be given to return uh, to the rightful uh, owner. Um, all that said, I want to again uh, say uh, uh, don't have much uh, to add. Uh, all of you have done uh, uh, people very, very proud. Um, I know Nigerians have been looking forward to this day, and I'm sure they're going to be very happy uh, with uh, the outcome of this uh, particular day. Uh, like uh, Pastor Ihim mentioned, um, more of this is going to be happening. Um, I happen to be part of uh, the leadership here in the U.S. when we uh, prosecuted in the Deco fight. And uh, some of the things uh, that uh, we're going to be doing now is going to be to the terror uh, around the same uh, uh, strategies. Um, I want to also say uh, that I am proud because today the visa ban we talked about was uh, part of uh, an initiative uh, that myself uh, Guiding the at the at the time, uh, spearheaded, even though eventually he joined the Abata regime, uh, as the case may be. But those uh, things we can readily uh, apply today, continue to fight for today. And I'm sure that uh, the, uh, if you also know, the Supreme Court judges that rendered the uh, very, very, the, the, the weird uh, ruling in Imo State, yes. where the fault became first, um, we, say, we also did the same thing. We, we pushed for uh, the Trump administration. Uh, eventually, they put a visa ban on uh, those, uh, uh, on those uh, uh, Supreme Court judges. Uh, so we are going to be making up going to them again that we are still in the trenches, we are still by the barricades, uh, if you guys misplace a mistake, uh, make an error in uh, delivering the wrong judgment in this particular case, um, we, will be, we will be on your case. There's no question about it. So once again, thank you everyone. Uh, this is the beginning. Let's all stand tall, stand strong, and let's keep fighting. Thank you very much.